Hi folks, Bird Dog John here. If you've made it to this video, that means that you need to perform a factory image on your 4K family device. And this video is gonna walk you through that entire process. We're probably looking at about 30 minutes. The video hopefully won't be that long because I'm gonna skip all the parts where I'm just sitting around and waiting. But the, video, the whole process probably takes about 30 minutes, so be sure that you have enough time. Uh, below on this video and in the knowledge database, there will be links for the relevant files that you're going to need, in particular the image file itself. Uh, the rest can be done on a Windows machine, okay? So some things you're going to need is a Windows 10 computer. You're going to need your bird dog device, okay, the bricked one or whatever. And uh, this, I should mention, this process is for devices that like don't show anything on the screen when you power it up or it shows like IP address one or um, yeah, it could be a various number of things. Like it won't show up on the network. The screen works and everything, but it won't show up on the network. Uh, you can't get it yet to it in the fallback address. Any of those reasons could be why you would do this update. Uh, and then you're going to need some sort of uh, little pin that you can use to uh, hold the factory reset button. So I just have one here on a, on a washer. That's uh, super handy to have. It's just from a phone. And then a USB drive and preferably one with an LCD light and you'll understand why in a few minutes. So these are the devices you're gonna need and a Windows 10 computer. All right, uh, let's go over and what I've done is I have downloaded the file that is relevant to this. And so let me just, sorry, close down a couple other screens and bring you over to my desktop. So here is the file that is, it's uh, it .img.gz file. And the way that I know that this is for the 4K HDMI device, okay? So this has the two HDMI ports on it. The way that I know that is because it says HDMI 4K in the name. Other files will say 4K SDI or 4K quad. Please download the correct firmware for your device. Uh, do not put different firmwares or, or images on the device. During this process, the device cannot differentiate between images. And so you can really do some really deep damage by putting the wrong file on here. And that intentional damage is not covered by warranty. Okay. And we have ways of finding that out. So uh, download the correct file for your device. This is kind of a last stitch effort before you need to mail it to a distributor or to us at the support office to have this product looked at. Download the correct one. And then uh, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna double click on this file and it's gonna open up your local, you know, unzip program. Now here I don't have one. And so there's a couple of options that we can get. Um, there's a WinRAR is typically, I'm not going to say it's uh, approved for your Windows computer. You're going to have to decide for yourself whether you want to download it, but it is one that I use in the office for just general files. And so here we're going to open this file up. It's going to say, do you want to install? I'm doing this full process for you, by the way. All right. So now we have an actual unzip uh, program inside and you can see my image has now turned into one that I can unzip. So I'm going to open up WinRAR. It's going to ask me incessantly to donate and you may do so if you'd like. This is the file we need inside. Okay. So it is quite large and we need to extract this file to somewhere where I can find it. So to the desktop. And this is one of those waiting games that we're going to have to just sit around and wait for this to finish. If your computer is halfway decent, which this one's not bad, should only take a minute or two. Uh, if you have a really slow computer, your results may vary. So uh, check that out. And once it's done, we can actually minimize this. Once it's done, you're going to get a file that looks like this. That's actually an image file. Okay. It should be three or four, four gigs, somewhere like that. And uh, what we need to do is we need to rename this file big 4K, big 4k dot img okay but that's already on the file here so i'm not going to change it now but big 4k dot img okay part one is done now we're going to take our usb stick that we have and we're going to plug it into the computer plug in your usb stick and it's going to open up the the drive here what we want to do though is format this drive and follow these directions specifically, okay? So we're gonna um, type in the word format on our Windows 10 machine. It's gonna see create and format hard disk partitions from control panel. You're gonna get disk manager is what that's called. And we're gonna select the volume 
and we're going to right click on the volume that we've got here and say delete volume. Yes. Be very careful that you only do this to your USB stick and not to your C drive. That would be catastrophic. And um, yeah, be very, very careful inside disk management because <clears throat> you can do a lot of damage. So, uh, okay, and then once we have this unallocated, okay, basically that means this drive doesn't exist because there are no partitions on it. So once we have it as unallocated, we're going to right-click and say new simple volume, hit next. And we're going to make this 8,000 megabytes, okay? So that would be 8 gigs or roughly thereabout. Hit next. I don't care about the letter. Um, I, don't, I do care about the file system, so FAT32 is really important. And here I'm just going to call this like big 4K image or something like that just so I know what it is and say, okay, quick format is okay in this regard. All right. If this is done correctly, this can go one of two ways. If this is done correctly, you're going to get this screen. Okay, it was formatted correctly. If it wasn't done correctly, you're going to not get a screen. But if you go to File Explorer, okay, and scroll down, you're going to see the drive here, probably not what you named it. And if you click on that drive, it'll say this drive needs to be formatted. It's okay to reformat it there with quick format. All right, just this little side note. All right, and then we're going to take big 4K image and we're going to drag it and put it into our USB stick. Now, this is the part that's going to take a little while because it's 4 gigs. And so, again, depending on the speed of your USB drive, your results may vary. So, I'm going to cut the video here. You pause the video, wait till it's done, and then join us back again. A few moments later. Okay, folks, so we are back at it here, and uh, that took me about six minutes to copy all of that over, and so if you're wondering if yours is taking exceptionally long, mine took just as long. Uh, we're, we're good to go. This drive is on there, so now we can remove the drive from the computer, and you'll see the screen disappear. It'll leave disk management if you still got that open. I'm just going to close that down, and now I'm going to bring you over to my overhead shot here. And um, so I've got my unit here. I've got a little pin for the factory reset in my USB drive. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is power. So we're going to uh, add that to the list of things that, that you're going to need. Now, you can also use DC power for this process. Uh, but PoE is just readily available here in my office, and so we're going to use it today. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in the USB to the front of the unit. And so it pops in like that and we're going to take our pin and you're going to put it inside this factory reset button that's right here and you'll feel it click just a little bit you can kind of hear that you should be able to hear that unit clicking um, it's a very light touch no need to force it don't have to hold it with the jaws of life just go gentle and uh, and push that pin in you got to get it to kind of stand perfectly so your fingers can hold it all right, so you notice what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm holding it with one hand because I'm going to need this hand to do the PoE. And then once I've got it held down like that, I'm going to plug in the unit. Now, you're going to wait about 20 seconds, but if your unit has an LCD light on it, the USB, this is where this comes in handy because you're going to hold it down until you see the second set of big flashes, okay? So the unit right now is booting. There's the first, oh, I'm sorry. There's the first set of flashes. Stop. There's the second set of flashes. Okay, so now we're going to release the pin and we're going to put the unit down and we're going to let it now run. And this process takes about 15 minutes. A few moments later. Hey folks, okay, part two of this video. So now you can see that the USB has stopped flashing and now the tally light is giving me the green and red indication that it is finished. And so we can unplug the actual USB and we can power down the unit. And I'm going to plug it right back into power, okay? So we should see the NIC lights turn on and flash a little bit. Tally light is also cycling, so that's all good. And we're just going to let that boot up. And what's going to happen is it's going to probably fall back to 192.168.100.100. So in preparation for that, two things we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a website here real quick. And uh, it's actually the Bird Dog website, birddog.tv. I'm going to show you. I, I didn't do my due diligence, and I didn't download the file. So I'm going to show you that in real time while the unit boots up. So let's go over to that. 
And here we go, uh, support, downloads, and then converters. And then uh, today we're doing the 4K HDMI, so that's this guy. We're going to click download. Now this website is all brand new. Uh, it's all gone to a, a new server and everything, and even the download pages look a little bit different. So you just click on the name of the file that you want, and it should download relatively quickly, at least on the Australian side, it should be quite quick. Uh, and then we are going to, uh, now that we've got that file, we're going to wait for our unit to come back and then log into it. Now, the screen does show 100-100, so I will show you that real quick. Uh, here it is, 100-100, and it shows the bird dog name on there as well. So let's go back to my screen now, back to the Windows machine. And let's get ready to connect to this device. Now, you might get lucky here and uh, be able to just change your NIC card to 100-100 and then 100-123 uh, and then it work. But there's a good chance that you're going to need to connect the Ethernet cable directly to your computer like you're trying to get into it locally. Um, I have had success both ways. And so we're going to see what that looks like here today. Um, so let me tell you what I'm doing here. I go to control panel and then I click on uh, network. Where is it here? I went to control panel, network and sharing center. And then I click on the actual NIC card that I want to edit. And I can say properties, IPv4 TCP. And then I can go to 192.168.100.1. If you hit tab, it should fill in triple two five five across. It needs to be two five five two five five two five five zero, and then here I'm going to put in the uh, NIC address of the unit. So that would be one hundred dot one hundred, and I'm going to hit OK, OK, close. And uh, this is probably going to say unidentified network, or it it might actually see the unit and say, "Do you want to join?" Which is totally fine. Which is good news. And then we're going to go back to a web page. Chrome, please. Please use Google Chrome. And type in 192.168.100.100. And here, now, we've got, it's because I'm offline. It's not, it's pretty upset about that. Uh, now I'm back to the web UI of this 4K unit. So now I'm going to type in my default password, which is bird dog, all one word, lowercase. And you'll notice that I've got 153 on this unit and we're sitting in static. So now the first thing we wanna do is go to network and change it to DHCP and hit apply. And then I'm going to power cycle the unit. So I'm gonna unplug the unit. And I just realized my camera is frozen because I left the network and I'm using NDI for that. So that'll all come back in a second. When I change, you can watch me do this here. When I change, it back to address automatically. Say okay, say okay, and then my video should come alive here in a second. Oh, there I am. Hi, everybody. So uh, obviously I disconnect from the network and the NDI stuff stopped working because I all have DHCP addresses. Okay, so now we're going to wait for the bird dog unit to come back alive. So let's give this a couple of minutes to see the NIC card is on waiting for, I saw the tally light. Okay, so there, IP address, 192.168.1.113. Okay, all right, so again, back to the computer screen. And I want to go here. I just want to verify that I have gotten rid of, well, I know the IP address is correct because I've got NDI video again. So make sure that you clear that. And now we're going to uh, go into the web UI 192.168.1.113. Remember, go to the website. Bird dog is the password, all lowercase. Okay, here we go. Now we're in the web UI. It shows active. Everything's up and running. Okay, now firmware update. Here we go. System. System update. Choose file. Downloads. Okay. Let's say extract files and put them on my desktop. Say okay. Let's go to desktop, LTS beta, there it is. Okay, great, 192-LTS beta firmware for HDMI 4K. Hit open, all right, this is loaded now into the updater. We're gonna say update, 
and we're gonna let this run. A few moments later. Okay, folks, so now the unit has uh, restarted and it is powered up. We did get the same IP address, 1.113 on the unit. And so uh, we're gonna go back to our screen capture shot here. Now, bird dog is my password. I log into the unit. Okay, so the things we wanna double check before we start doing stuff is make sure discovery server's off. Uh, so we go to NDI network settings under system, click off and hit apply. We also wanna go and make sure we're running DHCP, which is correct. We know that because it's on the screen. And lastly, we want to go to device settings, make sure that, okay, we want this to be a decode. And uh, we want to make sure that NDI groups is off, okay? So NDI groups need to be turned off. So here it is, uh, NDI groups. So that's on the AV tab, NDI encode settings, NDI groups enabled. Uh, please make sure that's hit to disable unless you are specifically using discovery server or groups, those items need to always be off. All right, everything else looks good here. We're in decode mode, so let's give it a source. And sometimes when you switch to decode, you need to uh, you know, just restart video. So you can do that here on the dashboard page. So restart video, it does look like we're already in decode. So now we're gonna say AV, decode settings, refresh the lists, find the sources on the network. I do this three or four times typically, uh, and this generally consistently works in Chrome. It doesn't work very well in other browsers, so just watch out for that. And then uh, the Studio P200, which is the one that you're looking at here. So we hit apply. And then we go and we can check out our decode settings. So as it connects to this signal, this information will populate. But okay, 151 megabits, that's what we want to see. It is a 1080p uh, signal at 60 frames. Uh, 422, this is all correct. It's reading back. The information is being sent to the unit. So now you run your checks, see if you still have your previous problems that you had before. And, uh, and let us know. So reach out to us at help at birddog.tv if you still have issues. Reach out to us there. In the meantime, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, it's a long video. I understand it's a long tutorial, but hopefully this gets you up and running and it saves you from needing to mail your device uh, to us or to an authorized dealer. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for sticking on with us. And we'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.